and welcome to another edition of Debates in Popular Music Education. Today, Paul and I will discuss some of your responses and some of your questions that you've reached out to us with via our hashtag APME Talkback. And as a reminder, the title of our conversation with Kat Reinhardt and Corbin Jones was, What Does the Performing Musician Need from a Poppy Music Education? So to that, we're just going to dive right in. This is going to be rough. This is going to be just Paul and I riffing back and forth for a few minutes. So once again, we encourage you now and in the future to continue to engage with us. And we'll continue to engage with you all as well. So the first question is this. Do we need music history? What purpose does a music history course or coursework serve in the curriculum if you're a popular music performance major? Paul, uh, thoughts? This is, this, this, this is just such a brilliant question that came up in conversation. <laughs> it genuinely is. Because, you know, the person that I was talking to about this said, well, they don't need music history as a popular musician because they mm. know the history. They've probably lived through it or that it's been ingrained in their culture. And they don't need to know about Bach, Beethoven and Mozart. They're just dead white males. What's the point? Um, just let them know this. So you, can, you stop overcomplicating it for them. You know, where did this come from? How did we get to this point? And how do we understand this point from the historical moments, the social moments, the cultural moments that led us here? To take history as, well, we need to know a set of dates, so we need to know how the stones were influenced. It's missing the point. I mm -hmm. think it's contextualised history. And there'd mm -hmm. be very few his modern historians, I would say, would argue that that's dissimilar from their teachings at all. So it also depends on what is your course in your institution that really the student has signed up for. So if they've come to a very particular institution because they want that expertise, because their faculty have that expertise, mm -hmm. then why would you remove it? So I actually agree. Yes, we should remove music history, but we should call it context. We should call it social and cultural context of popular music. And it should be tailored to that institution. I, I, I love that idea because that's from for, for me, one thing I always tried to do was connect what we're doing in the classroom yeah. to the music. That's why we every year I took my students on trips to to Memphis, mm -hmm. to New Orleans, to Miami, to Cuba, to all these places. Yeah. So it's not just a matter of, hey, let's just let's play this music because it's great music. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, really exactly. dig into what's going on and why did this artist write this song at this time and let's and you were talking about context let's be very blunt here a lot of the mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. of popular music has been erased uh -huh. it's been si it's been sidestepped and Sorry. is completely ignored and that's whether yeah. you know especially in for for me from my experiences you were yeah. you know once again going back to, to the dead white guys we might yeah. have spent a, one or two days on yeah. jazz history one or two days on world music. And yeah. uh, once again, but we're gonna spend, by God, we're gonna spend a month on Wagner. Oh, why? Really? <laughs> Genuinely, and it's interesting. There's this, there, yeah, there's this, there's this quote I always remember. I forget what the book is, but it was a book I had in college. Um, I think it was about multicultural music education or world music or something. Yeah. But it, the, uh, the, the quote was, three fifths of the world can't be wrong. Yeah. Speaking to the yeah. fact that at least yeah, three fifths, if not more, yeah. don't care about Mozart, don't care about yeah. Wagner. Yeah. So Which how do we find that? Yeah, how, how do we find that middle yeah. point? But I absolutely agree. How do we contextualize it? And how do we bring in the social and the cultural aspects and yeah. what's been erased of the social and exactly. cultural aspects and bring that into um, our discussions around music history? Absolutely. I mean, this this gets us into the next one, which you're about mm. to see me come up like a rocket with. Uh, so I, I'm going to hijack you through here, Steve. I know you're going to mention it, but I'm just going to say it. it. It's theory. We'll get rid of theory out of the curriculum. Oh, stop! You know, no, here. I might have even written an article on this. Do you know? I might have even written a chapter in a book about this. I, I, no, I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I may have come across an article once or twice. You, 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 you <laughs> might have come across that called I've Heard There Was a Secret Chord, which is mm -hmm. obviously in the Taylor and Francis Popular Music Education book. Now, look, it's simple. Stop talking about history as a definite article. Stop talking about theory as a definite article. We, they are indefinite because they are tailored by how we understand them. So there isn't the history of music. There are histories mm. of music. 
there are theories of music and just what you said there beautifully about the dead white guy you know that's how many theories are known they are known as that's the theory so they take it out of abstract they, they are just completely just oh because it is mm. i spent ages in my curriculum going well why I, I i am so annoying to the students my that's just a general comment but i am so annoying because i always well why why are you believing this why are you not questioning this so if we're talking about four-part writing for either doing it in either big band style or doing it as just as a nice string quartet background for pop what 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 where did this come from and okay how many of you students how many of you are told why you shouldn't double a third and they go oh yes yes my teacher told me that why and, they'll go, and then they'll give some rubbish answer. You know, oh, it's too rich in the cold. Oh, shut up. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a load of rubbish. That particular theoretical line came from a particular practice, which was started off by Thomas Campion. Thomas Campion, a 17th century musicologist, had a theory and algorithm. And that then took ground. And then over time, hundreds and hundreds of years, people forgot that it was a person that wrote that theory. Mm -hmm. So people forgot the history behind it. I think we do need to teach theory because they are on a degree program. I don't think they should be taught theory if they're not on a degree program because they've not elected to do that. You go into a degree program because you want to have a full and rich understanding of your discipline. You choose the degree program accordingly. I mean, let's not forget that our subject was originally part of the quadrivium. So, you know, we've got a little bit of upper ground here on it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it is, should be compulsory. Oh, I think I think it was fairly concise this. Steve. <laughs> it was, though, wasn't it? There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, and sorry, I was I was a bit full on there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll right there. I think for me, it really comes down to an idea, a concept of a function over fashion. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times when I was taught, it's like, do this because it sounds good. Do this because it looks good. Do this, make sure the stems go this way and don't double the third mm -hmm. and don't, you know, do this. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, so, so that's one thing is that, and that's one thing I, I try to, I try to do in the classroom is that mm -hmm. when we're talking about theoretical concepts, not to use it necessarily as a, mo a, 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 a tool for analysis yeah. period. That's yeah. all it's for yeah. Yeah. more yeah. of a, yeah. of a tool for yes, a tool for analysis, but also a tool yeah. for communication. I, I distinctly, totally. and it could be something totally. as simple as you know, Nashville numbers are calling out changes yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. I remember distinctly, I was in the pit of a touring Broadway musical in um, years ago. And this is before I really mm -hmm. was very uh, um, deep in the understanding theory, not even deep, just mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. surface level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my book, I was in the pit, we're sitting there playing. I think it was Greece. The book, mm -hmm. my stand collapsed and my right. book fell over my lap and hit the floor. Yeah. Ooh. And I kind of did one of these over to the guitar players, kind of a, yeah. huh? you know, yeah. help me. And yeah. he was just like yeah. four, yeah. six, yeah. five. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, it, you, you okay. want me to okay. call somebody? I, 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 I think, yeah. And, and at that point, I think I know, I, I, you know, at that point, I was like, okay, cool. He's telling me chords. Yeah. But so, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah. you know, looking yeah. at it from that viewpoint, it's how do, when we, when we, when we discuss theory, when we teach theory, when we learn these theoretical concepts, teach, learn, and discuss them and implement them in a practical method, method manner okay. in a way that you'll actually be using them yeah. on the yeah. gig. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Because, you know, can you imagine getting to the end of a program and you, and, and you haven't encountered it? Mm -hmm. And then you go out into the practical world and somebody starts spitting the lead sheet numbers here, the national numbers out here. Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. Cool. This one's right for you, isn't it? About, you know, should we drop the number of private instrumental lessons these people are privileged with? Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah, and this comes down to me for the whole, this idea of a master apprentice model. Um, yeah. how, do, how do private lessons fit into a popular music degree? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So for me... I've kind of come to the realization that I've, I'm approaching this pop probably uh, from, I'm approaching these from a, a different standpoint than, than many of my colleagues and friends. I think part of it is due to the fact that when I did my undergrad and my master's, I was a jazz major. I was also a classical yeah, right. major. So I took two yeah. sets of lessons each week. Mm -hmm. 
in addition to playing in school and playing outside of school. So a lot of popular music programs are have already and are continuing to move away from this master apprentice model. And I can certainly see why, because typically yeah. that's not how pop musicians learn. They don't necessarily learn by taking one-on-one right, yeah. -on -one lessons. They might, yeah. and they might, they may also learn from YouTube sitting in their basement yeah. and listening yeah, yeah, to yeah. Spotify or trying, just yeah. trying to figure out songs. But for me, I think there's actually benefits. So for me, it's that, it's that relationship one, but truly it was as a bass player, how can I become a better bass player by having a better bass player Yes. encourage me and support me and say hey have you thought about trying this okay cool mm -hmm. take that now go do it on the gig and going back to our, our theory conversation it wasn't this idea of here's how you play the bass now go do it in in a practice room it was yeah. go do it now go do it on the gig so it was more yeah, of that absolutely. that bridge that connection between what we're doing in the classroom and what we're doing on the gig so I kind of want to leave with just a closing thought of what you take out depends upon the specialty of your faculty. It depends upon the clarity of your offer for what your program is. And to call it a music degree is really unhelpful mm. because a music degree is a music degree. Now it needs to say that to the 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old who's moving into those worlds. But actually, we need to help them drive down and say, if you come to this institution because it has this people, then you're going to be going through these things and we're going to tailor them to suit. We're going to become very aware of your trajectory as a musician. So mm -hmm. you won't have this, but you will have that. And that's what I think is the most helpful when you think, what do I leave out of my curriculum? Well, what, who have you got there? And what do you want that end result to be for the students? What do you want them to have? If you want to have them this massive pluralist understanding of their program, you're probably spreading it a bit too thin. Back. Once again, Paul, thank you so much. Always yeah. a joy. Thanks, and Steve. And we look forward to continued conversations. We'd love to hear your responses to the provocation. We encourage you to join the conversation on your social media of choice using the hashtag APME Talkback. Have a topic you'd like us to consider, a question you'd be keen on us digging into, or perhaps a provocation of your own. Reach out to us using the hashtag APMETalkback. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks for listening.